I'd like to thank Cassine for joining us uh, and doing his part on the the jam session for us. Uh, we really we've known Cassine for many many years. Probably one of the first people we met in the industry when we started doing hair shows. Appreciate all the assistance he's given us over the years and all the good information he's given us. Uh, again, just I want to encourage everybody, uh, the educators just aren't making any money off this. They're doing this uh, out of the goodness of their hearts. So go to their websites, check them out. If there's something there you can buy, uh, by all means, uh, take care of them and, uh, and give them a little loving. We all need that right now. Hello, friends. How are you? My name is Tuskeen Lahi and I'm, uh, I own Nina Inc. Uh, I'm located in Newark, Delaware. I've been in business for uh, over 25 years. The main product of my business is hair cutting scissors, uh, accessories, combs, clips, scissor cases, and of course scissor parts, which you folks use all the time. And uh, uh, I have a website, www.ninaneek.com. Uh, want to see further more about my product line please visit us we have a facebook uh, we have instagram also you can visit us on uh, uh, over there and uh, if you need to know a little bit more about business you can call me on my cell text me my number is 302-494-0027 and uh, i will answer uh, any of your question regarding whether it's a scissors uh, it is a uh, you know, other other parts. Uh, if you have some personal issues, I can still talk to you. Uh, so, uh, basically, that's me. Uh, so, I hope uh, we are talking through video chatting uh, in a very unprecedented time. Uh, we have been going through some uh, uh, really uh, different time of our life. Uh, the things has changed a lot in the last 10 weeks. And that 10 weeks is completely changed the life. I, I, I see the new meaning of life, new way of normal. There's a lot of new normals we are going through. And uh, it has uh, affected us emotionally and financially. And uh, everybody's locked down at home, trying to find what to do, trying to find the new skills. Uh, some of you, you folks probably are practicing a lot about the scissors, how to sharpen the scissors if you're new in it and um, are uh, annoying each other with the kids or a wife, I don't know, but my wife and me, we are actually kept ourselves at a distance, social distance, start from home. So she stay downstairs during the daytime and I come to work. I mean, there is no work, very little, but I spend few hours over here. When I go home, I have upstairs my room, study room where I spend, and we meet at each other at dinner and we talk about the days so we try to keep our distance so we don't annihilate the we don't want to get to the point where she don't want to see me or i i don't want to see <laughs> so we are still going through that phase uh my two daughters uh they are uh, almost grown up both of them are uh, working from home and they don't want to come home they say uh, mom and dad we want to both of you to be safe and we are good, we talk every day, we do video chat just like we are doing together today. And uh, they're, you know, luckily, blessingly, they are uh, they have the job, they are working from home, so that's a good thing. They don't call me for anything, that's a good thing. So that's, that's I'm blessed with that. <laughs> and I hope all of you guys and your families are in good health also. And uh, my main topic of this Day, which we are chatting is how we are moving forward with, with a new normal which is implemented in the society in our business so the way of business is changed and uh, with that change of uh, you know tone how we conduct our business there are some new challenges which I think in my opinion we are going to face especially in the sharpening industry we are going to face a lot because our industry which is a hair salon or your know, beauty industry in order to maintain social distance is literally impossible you need to have the customer working and you're sitting very close to you and the stylist has to be you know very close and cutting hair so, so they have to do a lot they have to implement a lot of things how they are going to cover themselves how they can uh, protect themselves from keeping the safety of the customers also 
but that's their part. Being a sharp nurse, uh, we have our challenges also. Unlike in the past, uh, we can just walk into the business and talk to our potential customer or client, and uh, everything is fine. But now that thing, I think, in my opinion, it will be it will be very limited. Only the customers, if you have a built-up customer who you know it, and he's been working with you, they will allow you for a short period of time, and they will hand over the product to service or whatever. Uh, otherwise, the going frequently into the salon is, in my opinion, for sure, at least for now, it is it is not going to be happening right now. So they will be very reluctant, especially if you have a, a stylist who's working over there. The manager or the owner of the salon is not going to know you because of the guidelines. That's number one issue which they have to face. Is. Number two, the they have to face is that uh, we, in the past, they allow you to sh service the tools. They will give you, provide the back room where you can go and set up your machine and you can do the work and you are done with that one. If you don't have the mobile station in your van, then you can use a back room. That is the thing of the past. I don't think so that any shop will allow you use their facility because of the contamination. So that's another issue that which you, we're going to have to face in the coming days. Then, if you are making a lot of cold calls, like you just go, you never been to any salon, that's the thing of the past. I don't think so. If they don't know you and they have no idea who you are, what you do, they are not going to know you, at least for us, sometimes, until we have come to some kind of vaccination and we come to a normal life as uh, 10, day, 10 weeks before. Then, third point, fourth point, which I, I think a lot of sharpeners are going to face it, that when you, when the stylists are going to give you the tools, you have to be, you have to handle very carefully because you don't know, given the aspect of this uh, virus and the infection, you have to make sure that you, the tools you are getting it, they're clean and you are not sure about, so you have to handle it very carefully. You have to wear the gloves. You have to make sure you carefully clean it with alcohol, or sanitizer, wipe it, and then you have to do the service and then similarly you want to wipe it and pack it. That means you have an extra cost in getting the material to sanitize and extra times Extra time means you are losing money. So if your service charges is, for example, is a twenty-five dollar, no, you're spending like a extra 10, 15 minutes on doing that. So that means it eat up your profit. So that's another concern. So this is a difficult time, and this is difficult challenges which we have to face. But the sooner we adopt our new normal life in in this phase, the better it is for you for us. So the question is how you can be profitable during this very uncertain times. So there are, and how you, number two, how you can communicate with your customers during this time. You may not be able to go frequently into the salons and you don't have the only way you can contact them by phone or text message or uh, some other means of, uh, if they know you, they will call you. And uh, other thing is that uh, how you, with all those things, how you can be afloat, make a profit, keep your business, keep going on. These are the th issues we are, uh, we are going to face in coming days. I have, uh, and finally, the question is, are you ready for these challenges? Are you flexible to these uh, these new rules and new uh, adaptation of life in our uh, business? So I I think there there are some necessary questions we have to ask ourselves about your business moving forward. How are you going to want to be profitable? How, how can you be improve your business? What way you can adopt? What new method you can adopt to really get, get more business? So. These are some issues which everybody's going to face. So 
my recommendation, or I will, I have some points I wrote it over here. I think that will help our sharpeners a lot. One thing is adding a new product line in addition to the shopping service, reaching to your customers by digitally, just like social media, a text message, improving having your website. If you have, don't have a website, make a new website or improve your website to provide the stylist to go on the website and they can you know, request for a sharpening or other services, providing a mail-in service, raising a service charge, which is important a lot of uh, sharpeners. They're very reluctant to yeah. raise their prices. So that raising your service charge, they communicate, is a, is a part of this, you know, safety, because you want to make sure that the when you sharpen it, uh, you know, you sanitize the scissor, put it in the, in, the, in the pouch and give it to them in a proper fashion. Uh, that will add to the cost of your service. So, and keeping yourself with the inventory. That means you have an extra product in addition to a, uh, you know, uh, sharpening is uh, another thing you need to consider in uh, increasing your profit. And uh, I know it is very difficult to go through this difficult process. We, the phase, what we are, we are not used to it. But I think we being as a teamwork, I being a supplier, uh, I myself shop with the scissors, but I don't go to the shops. Luckily, I don't go to the shop, I do mostly mail in. But uh, uh, as a supplier of uh, these products, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure I can help you guys in any way or shape. And if you have any question, you, you need my more detail that how I adapt myself. I'm here to answer all the questions and I hope all of us will go through this together and we will uh, prevail through this very difficult period and uh, but we just need to sanitize ourselves to the new normal thank you very much any question i will be available please uh, let me know and uh, i will be more than happy to help you guys thank you and i have a couple of questions for you you sure. take off there um one, I mean, some other sharpeners don't have a van. And I know Jay's been very busy and going, still going in the salons. So if, if the sharpener has no choice but to go in the salons and sharpen, what advice or suggestions do you have for them to protect themselves and the hairstylist if they're inside the salon, either picking up shears or sharpening? Well, the first of all, the, if, if they are one of those lucky people, which salon will actually allow them to use their back room, and they have been, yeah. They, if, they, if they are, I think first of all, they have to make sure that they have a proper gear for a safety as far as themselves. They have to make sure that they, 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 they use gloves. A lot of, I, I heard a lot of uh, sharpness. I talked to a lot of sharpness and they pull that. They never use gloves yeah. because they can't <laughs> sharpen them with that one. I think they have to get used with that one. Yeah, gloves I know some that do important. and some that don't, yeah. You have to wear a mask. Better wear some robe if you have that one, which cover your body, your clothes over there. And uh, you, should, you need to have all the basic things, like sanitizer, or wipe, alcohol wipes, all those things. And just when you use this facility, make sure you clean it, sanitize it before you leave it. Whether it's a floor or a table, you want to make sure that it's clean. You want don't want to leave an impression, but they, don't, they want to kick you next time you go over there. Yeah. You know, but uh, I, I, it's, the, it's a highly, I, I think, uh, in my opinion, uh, the shops, shops owner will be very careful about letting you using the back room now because for their own safety, they have to sanitize for a contamination. Yeah. Uh, you can leave it over there. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big question mark whether they will actually allow you. So for that reason, if you don't have the ban, I think the best way to do is that you 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 either have some uh, envelopes over there and leave it over there with their name. If they are already clients, then you don't have any problem. They can you, you can set up the time. You leave over there. They, you pick up the envelope and you can mail it. I mean, mailing is another way to do that one. And I'm doing that one during this lockdown. I have uh, spoken to a lot of uh, stylists. I email them. I digitally. I mean, use social media. I use emails. I text message. And I give them some kind of incentive that if they send all their scissors by dawn time, we can able to give them a, a good deal as far as 
flat price. I mean, if you have fiber and more scissors, we give them a flat price to, uh, you know. Uh, so I get a lot of, you know, shout out in mail. Yeah. We'll send that one. And I do so have a good, I was going to say, I do have a good YouTube video if they want to look for it about how to set up and do the shipping and all of that for a mail order sharpening. Exactly. Exactly. And I think the, uh, now is the time for all these sharpeners to, we, we, that they have to really digitize themselves. You mean, <laughs> yeah. they need to have a website, they need to have a Instagram, they need to have a Facebook. They, they, this is the time now they can actually... Uh, really go to the next step uh, in uh, contact with their customers because Bunny, I don't think so. Even your own, your very best client, if they are working in the salon with some state has a guideline that only two operator can work on the floor with two people working on that one. So that means, and they most of in our state they have locked the door. Even the salons are open, they don't. The doors are locked. You have wow. to lock the door. Yeah. You have to say that I have an appointment. I'm I'm here for my hair cut or anything like that. So I don't think so. They will uh, they will open the door for a shop, especially if they have a customer on the chair. So yeah, it's a it's an it's a new it. normal, huh? It's that, a new, it, it's a new normal. Yeah. And uh, that's that's a new normal. Mm -hmm. I mean, unfortunately, we 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 are in a in a situation where uh, at least for now we we have we don't know how long it will take five six months year we don't know but we have to adapt we cannot wait for a six month okay after six months things will be okay we have to adapt the new way of life and that's i think that's in every business even the big stores in the mall which is opening they are clearing curbside you cannot go into the store yet <laughs> so that's that's the way the life is especially for us as a sharpener it's a tough call and i i, I must say that when anybody who has just learned sharpening and going into the business this is not the right time i don't want to discourage it <laughs> don't take me as a negative but i'm giving a reality that's a fact of life well just by the sharpeners that are dropping in and as you know when we talked earlier i had a sharpener came by um here in georgia they are busy the sharpeners are busy and they're ordering a lot of parts and um, shears and that kind of thing. So I, I guess I think it depends. You're in the north up up in the in the um, the tough area of up there. Anything that's near New York City is going to be a little bit tougher is, than other parts is, of the country. Uh, you're right that it depends on the area in the state. Yes. Also, like Georgia, as far as I'm in Delaware, Delaware, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, which is still in the state of lockdown yeah yeah i mean our state has still the rise case cases rises every day so i think we see some relaxation since last friday but i haven't seen that it is not even close to i would say maybe 20 percent relaxation and still in some places some salons are not opening up i have a salon down the street from me uh it's a huge salon they have about 20 chairs on the floor Mm -hmm. They still have not open, even though sto uh, the state has allowed that one. <clears throat> the reason is, it is not worth for them to open. Yeah, the yeah. Because the restriction is you can only have a two operator. So if you have a 20 operators over there, whom you allow to go and work, and who you <laughs> left alone, you have to do uh, some kind of lottery. I, you know, you're not, your name come out and okay, you can work today and you can go home. So for them, it's, it's, it's a tough choice. And another thing which I, 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 this is my just guess, big salons, I mean if the things don't change, I hope, and I, I, I'm very optimistic moving forward, we will have some kind of uh, vaccination and some guidelines and CDC will come, we will, you know, conquer this virus. But if this thing don't change in the next, you know, six months, a year, big salons with the 20 people operators over there will be pretty much the things of the past. Because it's not profitable. They, you, you, you don't have all those 20 people really working and everybody chair is full. And this is how they, they make money. Yeah. If that is, that, if that will not, they won't be able, you know, able to pay rent for this big place over there. I, I, I spoke to actually last week, um, I, I, interestingly, I did not have my hair cut for eight or ten <laughs> week. So that was a, something I really want to have my hair cut. My wife wants to cut my hair. I says, forget it. 
you and I touching my head. <laughs> Did you take any picture of yourself with the long hair? Uh, I think my wife took my picture, some pictures. I Send it to me. Send it, it to me. If I ever ever share that one. <laughs> what happened that uh, I called my local guy Charlie, and he'll go into the salon. He, you know, his good friend, and he go to different visit different. He sells supplies, all kind of supplies. So I said, Charlie, find me some stylist. I really want to have that one. So for a few weeks, he could not find nobody want to come over. They finally one girl said. Guess what? I'm gonna come. Okay. I'm gonna cut. So she came last week, and um, uh, she cut my hair. Uh, she did a really good job. If you mm -hmm. can see my hair over there, oh, handsome. she did a pretty good job. <laughs> and uh, so after she cut my hair, and she came into my office and we did have a little chat, and um, she said that um, uh, I work in a suite. You know, you know the different suites. The salon suites. Yeah, we have a lot the of them. Of mm -hmm. And she says for me. I have, uh, I, I don't have any issue because I have the clientele We I, my book is, you know, when I open, when I start working, I have appointments. I have a customer who's uh, good, good. I have my book is full. So I'm okay because it's very private. I can close the door. I can sanitize. I can work on it without any pressure. And I'm okay with that one. But she, she was saying that she has a friend who actually worked with about one big salon. And she said she's... She's not, you know, still don't know when she want to cut the hmm. So that is going to be some big issues, especially in our industry, where we have a very close contact with the customers. And I don't think so, even moving forward in few months when the things will be a little bit easier, if you have a customer sitting on the chair and uh, you have a sharpener coming, your customer, the customer is not going to be paid for the book. Yeah. Having a third person standing next to talking about shopping this is I don't think so that is gonna be a good thing for business. So that is that that has few challenges which we have to face. I mean unfortunately we we, we have to adapt. How how Bonnie, how you are uh, over there uh, in your business, well, when it comes to uh, I mean no shopping is one thing. What about the business in our your sales business. I said I was talking to a couple of other companies over there. How did it affect you? Well, the biggest effect we had was, um, of course, we had the two hair shows that we had already paid for the booths, bought the product for it, and we're not getting, we're not getting a refund for those shows. And which, 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 which booths? The New York and Chicago. I think they are going to roll over there for next. Oh year. yeah, they're going to roll over next year. That doesn't help us now, and especially yeah, since well, we purchased. That's, that's inventory for those things that's our biggest our biggest problem but um one of the you know on a positive note i don't know her it depends on your point of view whether it's positive or negative but we're finding some of the older sharpeners are saying okay this is time to retire i quit and it's opening up opportunities for new sharpeners to come in so i am not sure if it's really a bad time for somebody to start in the sharpening business we've had a Several that have uh, got uh, got their training online and have bought a machine and are using this time to practice to get up to speed and um, are starting to contact people by phone so when things open up they can go in because um, I'm getting calls from hairstylists from around the country that they say well my sharpener retired I can't get a hold of my sharpener I need to send them to you so there may be um, you know, in, in the bad part of it, there may be some open opportunities for some new areas for some of the older sharpeners that are uh, maybe afraid to go in the salons or maybe just to decide this is the time to, to, to give it up. I have no problem with that. I, I think, Bunny, as far as the shares are concerned, this is some area which I, I think you you are in the same business, I'm in the same business, and we, we've been you know doing this business for quite some time. One of the key things which uh, I want to share with these sharpeners, I mean my fellow sharpeners over there, that sharpening is a, is a skill. It's a skill you learn it. You know, you, you practice it, you learn it, you actually become a, a, a master of it, a slowly become a master of it. You have your own niche. Not every sharpener is the same. Even you are the same teacher, you <laughs> see the same method. Yep. It may not come the same result from everybody. because. Then comes to individual uh, your skills. 
uh, your intelligence, your niche. As you are sharpening the scissor, you find certain niche which no teacher will teach you. Only you will find it. Yes. You are doing that much. You are going through certain steps, certain scissor. You have some challenge. Some scissor came and you said, "Oh, I can fix this scissor." So you find some way to fix it, and you are very excited with that. You fix it. Then you want to share with that one. That's perfectly fine. Skill is that this skill will always make you uh, in a in a position where you can go out and make money if you want to make it. You you know you have nothing to do. You go out. You have a one good day. You make few hundred dollars or three. You know you have a today is very good day. I think I'm retired. I'm in semi retired. I don't need that much money. I'm good with that money. But I think when situation like this one, when you are is a, your customer, one of the thing is I see that one and I ask. A lot of sharpeners. When you go to the salon and they hand over to you four or five scissors, right? You take those scissors and sharpen and give them a service. Did you ever ask those scissors, uh, the, your clients who trust you, give their scissors? When did they get? The, when did they buy that scissor? Did they buy at the show? Or some other salesman came into the salon and sold them? And if they bought at the show, that's a different thing. But if somebody came and sold it. Then you are losing that part of business. Yeah. That means that's opportunity which you have. If she trusts you, she will listen to your recommendation. It's just like a car, my car mechanic. If I want to buy it, buy a car, I will ask my mechanic, "Hey, I'm going to buy this car. I'm going to spend this kind of money. What do you think? What do your recommendation is? If this car is, is you know, I will have a little feedback because they, I have a trust on them that he is good. He knows about mechanics of the car, everything, and you know." Down the road, I'm going to keep this car for five years. Same like shares. If you are the service guy, the stylist has to ask you, "Hey, I need to buy a scissor. What do you think?" Now, if you have good, you know, you have good selection, good inventory and selection of scissor to offer. Not because what you want. You don't want to be a delivery boy. You want to be a salesman also. You want to present your. This is what I have, and this is my recommendation. And depending what you are. You want to buy it? How you cut hair? You need to know the profile of that stylist. That how how she cut hair. You, and then you need to know the scissor also. What you are selling about that scissor? What that scissor will do? Because if you don't know the basic knowledge, then you cannot have that stylist. So that's the important thing. That during this time they have to they have may have to consider that while we are doing this thing and we are meeting these stylists every day. I can I can sell that one. And by the way, I want to I want I, I, I don't want to brag it, but I uh, you know I want to share you that the lady the the stylist who cut my hair yeah tell you an interesting story about that one. She 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 opened her uh, uh, you know uh, you know package of scissors. That's why I asked her. I said, Micklin, I'm sorry, I don't want to offend you, but I don't want you to use your scissors. She mm-hmm. said, What do you mean? I said, I don't want because I don't know if you sanitize or not. I don't want you to use that your comb. She said, "Oh, no worries. Uh, what you have it? So I have my sample kit, all the scissors, and I said you can use any scissor you want it from here, and whatever size you use, use it." She said, "These are new. You don't want me to use?" I said, "Yeah, I want you to use." <laughs> so she started using it. I, I, she said, "What does this scissor do? Why this blade is like this one?" Mm-hmm. So I show her. I give her five minutes to show her this is how it cuts. And you can freely use the scissor the way I show you on my hair. It's long hair. You can do that one. So she used different scissor, and finally she used one of my Tara's, you know, and mm-hmm. so and then that special those double sided in a Tara. She yeah. used that one. And she using and uh, while we she almost said she said the scheme. How much these scissors? I says uh, why which one? She said I'm using right now. How much is this? I said this is six forty nine. And he said, "What about this dinner?" I said, "That's five eighty-five." And she said, uh, "Really? It's rice. It's awesome cheer. It's uh, kind of expensive." I said, "Yeah, it is. But do you like it? Do you enjoy it?" She said, "Yes." So she finished hair cutting, and by the end, uh, she says, uh, "Listen, if I buy both, how much you will give me? Will you give me any discount?" <laughs> 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 What'd you say? Well, maybe. <laughs> I 
I said, okay, you cut my hair. I will. I said, you know what? I'm a scissor. She said, what? How many scissors you have? She said, I have a two. My scissor. I said, let me check it. So I check it. Those scissors was really bad. I said, I will do the service for you, and I'll give you hundred dollar off. She said, <laughs> she said, okay, pack me, and give me a credit card. I said, are you sure? She said, yeah, I'm sure. I said, how much I owe you for my haircut? She said, nothing. You sharpen my hair, a shear, and we are even. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole idea is over there. Until you don't show them, don't explain them, don't hand over something, don't expect sale will come to you. Right. They, yeah. they, they, they will not say, oh, I want to buy a scissor. Give me the scissor. I want to buy. Because they want to shop around. They will go online. They will check the prices. They will do that one. But that particular moment, if their need is there, you hand over something. Hey, try this thing. Try it. while you are doing the service back into parking lot. You can hand over a good scissor. How you cut hair? Try this one while I'm doing that one. You scissor. Give them as a loaner, and then have a little information about scissor. What that scissor will do. The likelihood you can you can make a sale. I mean, they will. You will build the uh, a trust. And number two. The stylists don't don't give yourself. They look at you. They look at you as a whole. How you, you how your appearance is, how nicely you dressed is. You have your T-shirts with your name or business name on it. Your business card. Your presentation is very very important. And then if you open up the, your portfolio of the you know product, if they see if you see the empty spot over there and they see something over there. And they probably have seen that one three, four weeks, and you open the same case. Don't they will remember? Good point. Good point. Yeah. They will remember. Yeah. And this is it was the same. It was the same. She is trying to. But if you have your case is full, never show the case half a family. Yeah. Just have full case. You have a couple of case, and that will create a a kind of trust. Number one, if you have a Different products, not one product. It's important because maybe that Bonica share or Tara share or that one is one of that one is in that case, and she is using that one of that brand. Now you have you don't have to introduce yourself. I mean, in detail, the, your connection or your relationship already built up because she is using the same brand, and she saw in your portfolio one of that brand over there. So she will trust that this guy means business. So that's that's very important that you have to have different brands in your portfolio. And I mean, one brand it, it, you don't have to have inventory all. I mean, a lot of companies are willing to work. I work, and I'm pretty sure you will work with that one according to the need of you know the the sharpness what they actually need it and how much inventory that one we don't yeah. have any minimums yeah don't yeah respect like the other oh companies. we have a minimum it's one shear <laughs> one shear you buy it and if if you if you have but you need to have the product you need to have the selection yeah. at, at least you can't case. sell you sell can't sell from 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 one shear no don't don't sell from the case because the girl like from your portfolio you give the scissor she want to buy that scissor and you take from the case clean it up and give it to them now what will happen if you are organized enough that immediately you will call your supplier and say I want to replace that scissor. I send me the scissor my customer bought it because you want to tell customer this is my demos you want it I will have it delivered and you and me and I know that one I I have I told a lot of these people if you have a sale then twenty dollars for overnight shipping is not a big deal because yeah, it saves your trip. Save your trip over there. You don't have to go back and deliver that one. Think about the time you spend. If you see from me, and then you go and deliver that scissor, make the sale over there. Say it will be there on your in, in tomorrow, overnight at over here. Close the sale. Done. Don't wait. Okay, I will deliver you next week. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Next week things can change. Maybe she has some car broken down, right? She don't have a money now. <laughs> you know, I want to hold up. And how many times it happens? It happens all the time. Yeah. So if you don't have inventory, you cannot afford inventory. Then you can use this one. But if you are serious about this one, then you better have some inventory. That means 
whatever you have in the uh, in, in your case, at least to some degree, you need to have one or two pieces of that model what you have. It with. Well, ideally, yeah. And another ideally, point. That's a question. Another point I want to make about you said about having every slot full. What's nice about that is if you leave the case out for them to look at and you go back to get it, if there's a slot that's empty, then you, <laughs> someone's got your shear. Yes, yeah, but, the, but the, for, for some people, some uh, sharpeners are very reluctant to do so. In fact, I, uh, I got an email from, uh, there was an uh, email came to our IPSA board. Uh, one of the sharpeners uh, in Texas, he, he wrote about the new normal and he concern, his concern is that uh, I'm reluctant to leave the scissor in the salon and go and walk into the bank. He says, my issue is that in, I have, uh, I'm an old man and then I, you know, I deliver the scissor, I pick up my scissor and then I realize I'm missing some scissor and I don't know who took it. Rather, it left it over there and something like that. So I don't want to leave the scissor and then want to spend a time make sure that I have all the spaces. So some people might have an well, issue. Oh, that's true. It, it, yeah. It, you have to stop and think about these things because it, it's a whole different world than what we've um, been experiencing. It is, a, especially now, it's a totally different world. I mean, uh, the, the way of marketing is to be a totally different. One of the other thing, Bunny, which doing this time, people can, uh, these people can do it, is that because of the need, because of uh, the requirement. A lot of I'm getting a lot of calls. I mean, huge calls. People are want disposable capes, disposable capes. If I, I mean, literally, I got called every day. Long. Do you have a source for them? I'm, I know someone I has actually, them. I'm actually in the process of that one, and uh, in fact, I got some uh, uh, some quotes and some pictures also from overseas. So I'm working on it because right now. Disposable caps are hard to get. Even some of the stores, some companies who sell over here, they have raised the prices. In fact, I can give you an example that uh, last month I was talking to a company who uh, who used to sell a, uh, disposable caps. It's a 15 a pack. Yeah. And they were 15 a pack, and they, it was like a $15 wholesale price. Okay. I replaced the order with them. And guess what? Now they came back and raised it. It's going to be a nineteen dollars, and there will be a thirty. <laughs> yeah, we we were trying to get face masks. Now I do have um, face masks should come in this week that um, are made in Pakistan, and mm -hmm. they're the the cloth ones with the ly lycra, the stretchy fabric that we can put logos on. Yes. And uh, yes. so we're getting some. We have several salons that have ordered it with their logo. We're going to have some that are just kind of generic scissors and, you know, whatnot. So we'll have those pretty soon on our website. But that's something, if someone wants to order a hundred of them, um, we can, we can um, you know, with their logos on them, we can do that. And so, Yeah, that's that's one way to do that. But, but I, I have the source of uh, the boss. In fact, my boss will be here. I have ordered books on the boss, so I will be here in Monday. Okay, the, 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 page, the disposable ones, huh? So... Another thing is, one, one way I want to share an idea that this is good, that they, they need to have this, they have to source for these things because these salons need it. Yeah. These are the things they need it. Masks, gloves, uh, you know, capes, aprons, all those things they need it. Right now, this is in high demand. Sanitizer and all those things, they need it. So they, uh, they, I think they, they, that is another possibility that they add into their product line. If they have a source, if they need help, you know, call me, I may help them on that one over there, especially for the mask uh, and the capes. I'm, in a few, few few days I will know exactly yeah. how, how much, you know. And uh, Jeremiah, who's part of our Sharpeners Jam group, he's not a sharpener, but some some of some of you have met him because he's, he's presented a lot of the Sharpeners Jam. He His place has some right now, of the disposable <laughs> ones, so I'll, I'll mention that. Um, but... Yeah, I think I think there's an opportunity. Um, yeah. We don't want to gouge people on them. Um, yeah. No, 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 no. Gouge. I I had incidentally uh, during this pandemic, uh, uh, I had a few masks, uh, extra masks. One of my supplier actually was so kind enough from China. One of my supplier, well, I get some, you know, product line from them also. 
they they were so nice they text me and they said how is everything going and they know that what's going on so they send me free of job as complimentary 200 masks oh wow well you're better than me we they sent we we were sent a hundred so you must be a better customer but but uh they sent me a, and then I ordered some, and then they couldn't ship them out. The communist government stopped them from shipping it after I'd sent the money and everything. So, so that's a, that's another issue that we have. But I, if you need a mask, let me know my money. I have it. I can. Okay. I can okay. Everybody, everybody. And one, one another thing I want to share that one that uh, during this time, uh, which is in order to attract the business, in order to solicit yourself. I think you can also offer that every time you sharpen the scissor, sharpen somebody gave you the scissor, give one up. If you have a good supply of masks, free mask to them. I like okay. that. Every, yeah. Every sharpening, two free masks. Yeah. Yeah. You give it to them. I think that's another way to attract it. If yeah. You have cutting capes, good source of. It's a you can get any cutting capes, not disposable but reusable. You can get anywhere between five dollars to like ten dollars on the wholesale. So think about if, if somebody give you five scissors, you just say that I'm going to give you six masks and one cave if you give me six scissors. But sure, sure, sure. This is this is one way to really get the business. Uh, uh, so uh, as a safety package, give to the safety package. Take, take <laughs> you, you have to be, you know, use this one. So that that means you are, you are care about them. So that's that's few things we can, we can share that one. But uh, I, I, I wish everybody moving forward, and uh, I hope everybody is in good health. They should be a very extra precautionary. You know, they have to be careful about themselves also. Yeah. No matter what, protect yourself. Protect yourself and other. Wear a mask. I mean, even uh, some people say, I don't want to wear a mask. Hey, no matter what, just wear a mask. <laughs> protect yourself. You know, when things will be okay, you know, yeah, we know you look. Everybody look handsome. Everybody look pretty. You know, don't worry about that part. But uh, be careful because uh, uh, that's it's important right now. And I hope we go through this thing all together and we come out strong. Yes. That's what I can say that one. And, yes. Uh, hope, and I, I God willing, we will go through this one. You know, it's it's uh, we just have to be patient. I mean, we are a little bit impatient right now. And I can understand the human psychology how it works. Staying at home with no work or anything like that, it, 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 it's human. And then people don't care about that one. He said, "I don't care about virus. I don't care about anything." <laughs> you know, get out. I understand that psychology, but it's the same thing that we we have to follow some rules. We have to follow some guidelines. What the expert says. Listen to the scientists. Are the uh, you know, doctors who dealing this thing, you know, I, I, I would say that one, rest of the thing is fine. Use the extra precaution, but listen to what they are, what the de details are, what are the figures are, what the chart says, and based upon that one, make intelligent, you know, decision, what is good for you. Yeah. And uh, we hope all, everybody is in a safe and good health and uh, moving forward. Uh, hopefully next year we will meet in person and uh, uh, as far as so Bunny, I'm, I'm going to ask you your opinion what do you think uh, moving forward right? you know for the business for the shows whether the sh do you think that shows will, there will be any show this year uh, I don't, personally I think it's going to be at least two years before we have shows and it, that's what I think. And I think we may have shows, but there'll still be people afraid to come. I remember after, I mean, we, you've, we, you and I both have been around the block. Remember after 9-11, it took forever it's, for them to catch back up? Right. It took, it took a few, few years, at least a couple of years before the thing could And happen. I'm not sure that, um, you know, it may be the Bronner Brothers show in February is the last show we've done, we'll, we'll do. Who knows? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm I'm mentally preparing myself for no more hair shows. But that gives a bigger opportunity for the sharpeners because if people aren't there at the hair shows buying shears and getting sharpening, that it's more opportunity for them. But we'll we'll miss them. And um, I mean, because the Orlando show that was our favorite one that was coming up, and Bronner Brothers, you know, August where you know those are those are gone. Um, uh, are they gone? Are they gone? Yeah. 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 Ye
they still continue or they are raised? They have changed the dates. Uh, oh, they've changed the dates, but it's it's not going to happen. You know that. I mean, think about it. I don't think they'll... There, there's not going to be any until... Not, not just until we get the vaccine. People will have to have be taking the vaccine. And uh, um, I'm saying it'll probably be another four or five months after the vaccine. I mean, I don't want to be negative about it, but that's what I think is going to happen. So I'm not even optimistic about next year's Chicago and New York shows. I heard about Chicago. I spoke to one of the uh, guy and then because same thing, I, I called him, hey, listen, uh, you're going to refund the money. He says, well, we, we are not in a position uh, to refund the money, but uh, we can roll over for next year. And uh, he told me that uh, uh, they were even considering doing Chicago show next year in September instead yeah. of it. Yeah, that's what that's what I had heard, and that would that is the most reasonable about when I think looking a year from September. I don't expect anything this year. It's just, um, and the other thing, the other new norm for me, I don't know if we will ever pay for the shows like ahead of time, like we have been. I think we'll wait to the last minute, and if we get in, we get in. If we don't, we don't, and um, because. This was kind of hard to have two shows that we'd paid for. And, of course, the deposit on the premiere shows, that's, I, you know. Um, yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't know. So, as I said, we're going forward. It's a, it's a whole new world because after this virus, I mean, there's always going to be the fear. People are always going to have a fear. Is there going to be another one to be in that well, kind of a large crowd? Yeah, you're right because, in my opinion, uh, I look in this way that the shows prior to this uh, pandemic, I think the shows were already on the down, downward trend. Yeah. I mean, you see from, if you see a figure from last three years, you see that shows were going, the figures were going, you really have to work hard. I mean, yeah. you really have to juggle yourself to, you know, make yeah. the shows. Shows were already in the downward trend. With this thing now in place, I think the, and and people will be very reluctant to have the big crowd, like five, ten thousand people in in premier or New York, that will I don't think so people will be feel comfortable going in a large crowd, not knowing who's next person. So I think shows are in my opinion, I hope I'm wrong, shows are a thing of the past also.